Things we would like to talk about is the tips on CV writing, job applications, and interviewing. So hopefully some of these tips will come useful for you to secure yourself a job at Avanat. Right, so here's what we're going to be talking about, CV writing, job application and coaching and interview skills and techniques. Some of it may be quite new to you, so um, definitely be sure to make notes. So CV writing is obviously the best way to look at a CV is, is to see it as your marketing tool, right? You're selling yourself. Um, before you're even approaching your employer, before you're approaching a, a recruiter, this is what's selling you, right? Your CV needs to be absolutely outstanding. Not just CV, but also your LinkedIn profile, okay? So basically, when you're looking at writing your CV, there's a couple of um, points that you need to cover. You're going to be... Um, establishing the aim of the CV. So it's also, you know, what roles you wanted to target. Be sure that you've got a cover letter and you've got your email address on it as well. Understand the market guys that you wanted to target. If you're coming in to secure a job at Avanard, understand why you wanted to work for us, okay? Well, what is it about the company that you really like? So be sure to put this um, on, your C, uh, on your CV or tailor your CV in that line. You know, put your personal information on it. So don't worry about putting a picture on, but literally just put, um, you know, your name, surname, uh, location where you live, phone number, email address. What might be worth pointing out is, you know, maybe have a little bit of a professional email address, not something like I love the BR, you know, I love a BR or something like that. It's <laughs> just maybe, you know, put it, put it just Bob Smith at, you know, and an email address, something quite simple and professional. Um you know, definitely list the roles you've undertaken. It doesn't matter whether there was within the industry or not. Definitely put any kind of roles that you have done. List any kind of duties, responsibilities, because you want to emphasize the skills that you have, relevant skills, but at the same time, what you've learned from a job, okay? Any kind of technical capabilities and your achievements. Um, what's very important and where candidates often make errors is by not checking spelling mistakes for instance okay the attention to detail is very very important recruiters spend approximately six seconds on each cv before we make a decision whether we like profile or not so all these little points are very important that you stick to um, list all the skills any competencies that you have anything that potentially could be relevant for the job and also important is i think interest interest is very important because it gives us an insight to what you are like as a person and if you are at early stages of your career, any references or testimonials would also come handy. Here is a format of a CV. Uh, I, I think you might see it is quite actually small, but what I wanted to emphasize in here is the, the way it's been written. So it's, as you can see, the font is quite clear. There's no fancy font that would make us struggle to read the CV. You know, you've got your professional profile, you know, first of all. Then you're moving on into your core skills because this is what we're looking at. Is this candidate relevant? What skills do they have? You want to emphasize them, put them on the top of your CV. And then you're moving into the career summary. Now, note that this CV is written in a chronological order. Okay, so it's very important that we're starting from the most recent job. And when you write CV in the recent job, you're writing, you know, as you do in it present. Whereas anything in the past, uh, past jobs, you're writing all of it in the past, not like you're writing it about now, but in the past, what you've done. Then you will be moving on into um, anything else that was obviously less important. And to be honest with you, CV needs to be on two pages long. So don't worry about going into great detail, something you were doing 15 years ago, because it's probably not that relevant. And then in the end, you put in your education and qualification. Of course, not every size fits all, but this could be quite a good starting point when it comes to your CV. This job application coaching. Um, okay, so it is impressing a, a you know prospective employer and a competitive job market is paramount, of course. And, you know, how can you really stop your application from being rejected or, you know, not being noticed? There's a couple of things you can do, right? So you can apply to advertised vacancies through different, you know, complex navigation um, various sources. You can make speculative applications as well to, your to any employers. I mean, this is a great way, right? Because you get noticed. You actually get noticed when you're actually approaching us like, hey, 
have you got any jobs for someone with my skills? We'd love that, right? It's, it's, it's being, uh, being open. We have got very much open door policy, if you like. Um, so, yeah, this is, a, this is a great way of doing it. Manage, obviously, recruitment agencies. We all use recruitment agencies at some point to help us get through the door. They are dealing with number of number of candidates. How are they going to remember you? You want that? They probably won't. So what you want to do is manage the agencies yourself, right? Have a selected agencies you're wanting to work with. Ask for referral which agencies are good and manage these few agencies to help you get the job. Tailor your approach to each position. I always say that if candidates got a variety of skills or limited skills and they're wanting to apply for a job, um, please tell me what you're looking for. And this is a great way of putting things out there because if you're not going to tailor your CV, I would never understand what jobs you want to get. So be sure to do that and use your LinkedIn, guys. Use your LinkedIn. It doesn't matter if you are still a student or experienced person, LinkedIn is your new CV, right? This is where we're looking for you. This is where we're looking at the profile. You know, if you don't have a much experience, write up about yourself. Let us get to know you. This is probably one of the most important things those days, to be honest. And then we've got career first and networking. You're doing a great thing by being here right now. Um, you know, connect with us. Uh, connect with us on LinkedIn through Avanart. Um, however you like, attend different career fairs and networking because that's where you actually get to be noticed as well. So a couple of points to cover to optimize your job search. And I'm sure Risha agrees with it because we've, we've all done a couple of these options, at least two of them we've used ourselves, okay? So how can you optimize it? Like I said, get into networking events. Of course, it's virtual even more so take advantage of it. There's never been a better time to attend as many events as you like um, you know, during that time. You don't have to take time off. It doesn't clash with your work. You know, there's so much flexibility. Download LinkedIn mobile app, okay? Again, plenty of roles on LinkedIn, an pl amazing place to source for a new job, get a job notification set up. You can also proactively reach out to organizations that ourselves you can contact us via social media or directly however you prefer um, recruitment agencies touched on that already ask for recommendations which agency is work for you working with okay you don't want to just go with any um, and the resume like I said uh, you know one size does not really fit all okay so personalize, personalize your message that would make you stand out do not use same CV as everyone else do not have a one cover letter, like hi, I'd like to apply for your role because I know that you've sent this you know, cover letter to someone else, customize it, guys. Be personable. And finally, you know, create a social, a social a strong, uh, you know, a social media profile, right? Whether that's on uh, LinkedIn or, you know, Pinterest, whatever you're using to find yourself a job, depending on your industry. Definitely go with social media. Nice professional profile. Now, interview skills and techniques. Risha, would you like to cover this one? Because this is a very yeah, yeah. important one. And hopefully you gain something from here that'll help you actually secure a job at Avanade. So learn the skills, guys. Okay, perfect. perfect. Well, thanks, Becca. I'm going to need your help in moving the slides along, but I will, oh, yeah. I will tell you. So, um, yeah, so just uh, carrying on from, from um, some really good pointers from Magda, you're now at an interview stage, right? So you've now been invited uh, for an interview. Um, I know there are some really basic basics on here, uh, but it, it's it's not even um, it's a number of countless times what we've seen even the most basic things having been missed out. So you know, mm -hmm. preparation and punctuality are always key aspects to an interview. Um, it's always a good idea to almost have your story statement crafted ahead of your interview. So uh, you know, a couple of basic questions you're always going to be asked is introduce yourself. So just make sure that you've kind of almost got an opening line. How do you want to start? It always comes across well. Remember that it's ideally an hour or two hours and you're going to have to tell your entire story relevant to the role in order to make yourself a, a suitable candidate. Now, mm -hmm. if these are a two-way street, um, you know, the employer is expecting you to ask questions. And at the same time, um, they are also going to be assessing you. It's also a two-way street because you're assessing them. So ensure that your questions 
are more in line with the culture of the organization, you know, what actually matters to you. And it's dependent on the person you're talking to. So, for example, if you're talking to the recruiter uh, on site, then you should, yes, be talking about salaries, benefits. But if you're talking to somebody quite technical or hiring manager, I would recommend leave the salary conversation to your recruiter conversation and actually focus on the role and the skill and the career growth and opportunity that organization is going to um, uh, present to you. Uh, a key aspect is uh, obviously your appearance and your confidence and your body language, which often is something you know that gets hampered through virtual interviews because it, there is still a bit of a blocker. It's not quite the same. We don't know when we're going to be back in the normal world again. So it's quite mm -hmm. important that um, dress up or you know dress uh, smartly for your interviews. It's always not a bad thing to overdress and underdress. Uh, your body language, where your laptop is sitting, and your camera and your light setting are very very important. Um, if for any reason you're having any bandwidth or internet issues, it's always a good idea to keep a, a, a phone number of the interview uh, in, in handy so you can give them a call and reschedule um, obviously very very important that you bring your original self into the interview and into work and for that it's very important that you actually find an organization that actually welcomes you uh, to bring your authentic self to work so diversity is obviously very very key um, to you making your choice as an employer Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm able to hear okay because I get a bit of background noise there. Hopefully, it's just just me. Um, okay, um, and then following on from that, um, it's quite important for you to practice ahead of the interview. Now, there are a number of guides on the internet which tell you which are going to be uh, typical questions and how you can use the stars model. Um, and finally, always send a thank you note irrespective of how you felt it went, because a bit of courtesy actually goes, goes a really long way. Um, so the next slide, uh, Magda, if you can move to, is just going to give you an approach um, um, of what really you're being assessed on, right? So um, interview uh, schedules and interview panel interviews are going to be um, quite different uh, depending on the organization you go for, also depending on the role and the level of the role. Uh, however, in summary, you are being assessed for four key aspects, uh, ability, achievement, agility, and ambition. And it's really important to structure your answers um, uh, along with these four key attributes, if I may call them. So, you know, your ability is going to be really around your ability to do the role, you know, your experience. Your achievement is very, very important to an organization, even if you're just starting out in your, in your life, in your career. Um, it's very important to highlight, you know, what your achievements have been. Your agility, you know, how quickly can you actually pick up things? What is your, um, and that, in this essence, it's not a bad thing. We're not, you know, organizations typically shouldn't be looking for people who are just always quick learners, but it enables an organization, the right one, to understand what kind of a training program and support they need to put in place if you have certain gaps uh, or, or, you know, special needs even. And most importantly, ambition. You know, you've got to have desire and drive, right? You've got to have passion uh, to, to do what you want to do next and in your career. So do make sure that comes across um, at your interview. Um, I don't know what is next, actually, because I've gone blank. So, oh, OK. So the interview structure typically is going to be I, I'm just I'm just assuming here. I'm just generalizing 60 minutes. Um, and obviously in that, uh, ideally, as an interviewer, they should be structuring themselves. Now, at Avenard, we actually train our interviewers. We take interviewing very, very seriously, our candidate experience very seriously. So we ensure that we are telling our our interviewers to give our candidates a really, really good experience. Um, and we're actually preparing them to ensure that they're not just coming in and just assessing you and not letting you, you know, talk at all. So uh, ideally, again, that's a good way to assess what the organization is like as a candidate. Um, so, you know, you should be allowed to build a rapport. Uh, there should be a bit of a QA. and a And you know what? An organization should be selling itself to you. It's really not about assessing you. Um, so, yeah, and obviously eventually there is a bit of time that we uh, ask our interviewers to capture feedback so that, uh, you know, we, we do pride ourselves there as well, where we come in uh, quite quickly. So just back to the STARS uh, method, this is an approach used by both interviewers and candidates. Um, and typically, um, the S in the STAR is a situation. So ideally, when you're answering a question that's been asked to you, the best way to use to answer that question 
is to use the STARS method. So explain to the interviewer a situation, the tasks that were put across to you as part of that situation, the actions you actually took to in ensure the task um, was completed or, or not even, um, results, what the outcome was. And I do want to tell you that actually, if you've actually failed at something, it's not a bad thing to talk about it. I think it makes you look very genuine uh, and um, and normal. Uh, in fact, I, you know, personally speaking, I, I always tend to ask what somebody's failures have been and what they learned out of it. And then the self-appraisal. So if you've been able to um, articulate yourself in the right manner, then eventually from that situation, you would have learned what it was. So if you take that approach in answering your questions, typically it gives the interview a really good insight into what you've done, your experience, and your ways of working. We can move to the next slide. Perfect. And these are just sort of the different types of interviews. Now, I appreciate uh, we are um, uh, obviously in the interest of time. There's just quite a lot we've covered. But if anybody listening in to us um, is interested in getting a copy of this deck or wants to have a conversation, please do reach out to Magda Rai and we'll be more than happy to share some more insights with you.